Hi, it's Ludo. I love working from home. Because um, I had to make videos and stuff. And stuff. So, my name's Christine. And I am in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're currently in a COVID lockdown. So, we're just, everybody's trying to find a way to bide their time and entertain themselves. We've been in lockdown over a year. It's crazy. It's so crazy. So, my name's Christine, and I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I own a club called Wonderland. It's an alternative lifestyle club. Alternative lifestyle being uh, polyamorous, BDSM, swingers, LGBTQ+. Um, just everybody. We're pretty much all-inclusive, except for, for assholes and, um, yeah, just assholes. Um, so, today, I started doing these videos last year because I was trying to, um, get over, I was trying to handle COVID. So, now we're still in lockdown, but... I really like doing the videos, so let's get started. Today we're talking about um, we're talking about uh, polyamorous. I don't know a lot about polyamorous, but I've talked to a lot of people um, about the um, the poly the poly community. Wow, man, that's a they're. They're so interesting, like the dynamics of it. So we're going to talk about the dynamics of polyamorous. Um, now, I don't know firsthand, so we're going to be talking about um, what I've talked to other people about. I take a lot of notes. I talk to a lot of people. I'm extremely curious. I'm a very curious individual. And so we're going to be talking about the lingual of um, polyamorous. And then... I'm going to do another video about um, the different types of poly um, relationships, but that's another one. I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes. So we're talking about um, what is the, uh, the, um, the different types of polyamorous relationships. Now, I'm probably going to screw this up, but there's probably so much more. If I screw it up in some way, somehow, somebody please... Uh, Please let me know and I'll remake a video. But so we're gonna start with the, the um one primary plus or the higher arctical. Arc I can never say some of these words because I can't hear them because I'm actually deaf. So the higher arctical poly, which is basically one primary plus. So this pri this pri poly polyamorous relationship, the central relationship to is referred to so they have a um, a relationship okay they have a relationship and they've had a communication saying that they wanted something more so this the the central relationship is the person's primarily primary relationship this often comes with things like cohabitation marriage shared finances children and the possibility of only property and businesses together so they have a relationship okay and then um, someone or maybe both of them have decided that they want to add other partners and the other partners outside of the central relationship are viewed as non-primary, secondary uh, partners. Um, and partners are not equal. Those partners are not equal to each other in terms of power within the relationship or the things like interconnection and relationship intensity. Um, they're just, so the, the main relationship takes care of all that. And then the additional partners have basically the same amount of, um, power in the relationship. Um, so hierarchical po polyamory is also, um, is often the type of relationship structure that is assumed by people outside of the world as polyamorous dating and, um, relationships. So when a lot of people are looking in and they think of polyamorous, this is the relationship that most people think of, okay? It's uh, pretty standard. 
So then there's non-hierarchical uh, polyamory. So some people choose to have relationships where no one is defined as a primary partner. Relationships may be equal or may vary in time, energy, commitment, and, and uh, significance. Per participants are focused on all the parties to make sure that their needs are met. So nobody is more important than the other person. They're all equally important and they, um, um, they you know, who's ever involved to make sure that everybody's needs are taken care of. <clears throat> People who prefer this type of relationship mo model won't refer to any of their partners as being more or less important than any others. Partners are are not ranked regardless of length of relationship or living arrangements, and everyone has an equal voice. So, <clears throat> I've never seen this dynamic. Um, just because... Maybe people don't know exactly how to describe it. I have seen um, the primary, the one primary plus, and I have seen the kitchen table primary. Um, I don't know how well this one works. So if anybody has ever been in one of these, let me know. I'd like to talk to you. Because I've never seen anything like this firsthand. So I do have experience with the kitchen table polyamory. I have a good friend of mine who is um, has uh, two partners and they have experienced the kitchen. Actually, I have a couple people like that. Um, so a kitchen table prime, um, polyamory is a style of poly, poly, of poly that places emphasis on the family style connection among people involved in a network, whether they're romantically involved with each other or not. The name comes from the idea that everyone involved would be comfortable gathering around a kitchen table for a meal. This tends to denote a cozy atmosphere where people get along well. It may involve an entire polycule, gatherings for visits, movies and game nights, and other types of family style gatherings. Many who practice kitchen table polyamorous focus on the lifestyle that, that includes communal support and chosen, and chosen family building their own villages for support. So this is, uh, you know, when you have kitchen table polyamory, the whole family is involved. Um, even even as far as like mothers, um, you know, the, the couples, family members, like their children, their brothers, their sisters, their mothers are all, um, they spend time with all these people. Um, it's not um, like other relationships might be where, they don't um, share that they have a, a, extra um, outside relationships outside of their uh, primaries. So this one is really just an amazing to just visually see. I, I've been overly impressed the amount of communication that uh, my friends, I have a couple of friends that are in this and the communication that they have, the connection that they have with their their polyamorous family is amazing um i've seen it firsthand and it is just it it's very interesting dynamic so then we have parallel poly Pal parallel poly is a term which describes relationship structure where members have no interest in meeting the others or being emotionally involved so i have a friend who also has this he has a wife and he also has a um, girlfriend and he tries to uh, spend equal time with them. In parallel polyamorous relationships, while members acknowledge each other's existence, they don't have the desire to be friends or to establish relationships with their metamors. So a metamor is the significant, the, the like it would be like uh, my boyfriend's girlfriend. Um, there are myads of reasons what reason someone may choose to practice poly pa polyamory. I think that everybody has to choose what works for them. Um, me, I don't want to meet anybody that my partner happens to be with, but I really want to hear about it. Um, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not poly, so <laughs> I just, I don't know. So, uh, and then monopoly relationships. So monopoly relationships so are those in which a partner identifies as polyamorous and the others identify as monogamous. So you have one person that is poly and 
everybody else is he he or she they it's always easier to say they they may have um a girlfriend a wife and another girlfriend but their partners do not have um of do not have other partners so this usually means that the polyamorous partner is looking to be in a relationship with more than one person while the monogamous partner um, is only interested in their relationship with the polyamorous. There are a variety of reasons why someone might choose might choose to be monopoly relationship, including different relationship orientations, mismatched sexual appetites and desires, distance, times, and energy limitations. So let's say like um, you're separated due to a job or something like that, the and you might want to um be with your partner only but your partner might want to be with other people um in relationships not just like one night stands or you know one time encounters like i guess i shouldn't have said one night stands i'm sorry for anybody i offended but anyways so the monopoly relationship might actually be something that you might look into um and then there's solo solo poly so this is one of the favorite polys my very good friends is solo poly and I think I got it, I'm not really sure, but if I didn't, didn't get it, let me know. So the people who practice solo poly are not interested in having a primary partner. Now this can change. They may change. Everything is flexibility. So they may decide later that they want to have a primary partner. But these people often dedicate, are often dedicated to polyamory, but not interested in serious relationships or their attached strings. Some people think of this as being the equivalent of having several secondary partners, but no primary. Really, it's much more it's much more varied um, a category. S some people who practice solo polyamory see themselves as their own primary partner and aren't interested in giving up the time or personal pursuits to dedicate the time needed for serious primary relationships. They prefer to make their own decisions and have freedom to do what they like. So basically, someone that's in solo polyamory, they're um, an individual person and they don't have anybody in specific that they spend. Nobody has over important. Nobody is more important than themselves, basically. And um, so they if they have the time, they delegate who they would spend the time with. Nobody gets equal time sharing. They have and my solely poly polyamorous friend is very very transparent with what she does um which is a necessity maybe possibly if you're going to look into solely poly any kind of polyamory it's about communication and transparency um so for now those are the um those are the relationships that we're talking about i'm going to make a second video that is going to cover uh, relationship anarchy and other lingual. So check that out. And guys, thank you very much for joining today. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And I hope that you'll subscribe my whole little tiny following. Um, and if you guys have anything that you guys want me to talk about, then just let me know. Thank you very much. And be good to yourselves and be good to each other. Bye.